Hey, good morning, everyone. So, um, if you recall about a week ago or so, my son Jason and I, there's Jason right there, <laughs> we went out and we found that old speedboat that was, uh, it was an old racing boat hidden inside of a barn. So today's the day we're actually gonna go out and pick it up. So we're gonna head to the car and um, go pick this up. So you excited to go pick this up? <laughs> we have to go uh, try and fit this rowboat in the back of our van too, because there's two boats actually. So um, yeah, so that's the adventure today. So let's, uh, let's get rolling. <laughs> yeah, the leech is uh, out here. Well, I don't know. There's not much for leeches, but he's nervous because he read a book called, what was it called? The 100 Most Dangerous Things? Or Most Disgusting Things. So he was telling me how there's a leech that crawled onto a guy's back and he didn't notice it. And it got to be how much bigger? Like 100 times bigger? And the guy died from it. And I said, well, what if the leech like put the guy's clothes on and started walking around? went to his job as an accountant. And what do you think about that, Jason? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. What if he had a mustache? They'd be like, hey, Bob, you shaved your mustache today. And the leech would be like, muff, 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 because it's a leech, right? But yeah, not much for leeches in our lakes out here. Um, we go to the lake pretty often. We went out, what, a couple weeks ago, right? To Wobbaman. It's pretty warm. Shallow lake, like there's good swimming. It's fun for the kids. Um, when we stop, I'll show you the lake that, um, what's well, actually the northern tip of Wobbaman Lake is where, uh, where we're going and, uh, we'll take a few shots and show you kind of what the lake looks like, at least anyway, so you can envision where this boat that we're picking up, um, where it would have been used <laughs> and, uh, where their, where their cabin is, is only, um, you know, probably about two blocks away from the water. Like you can see the water right from their house and to think that it never got back on the water. Like they probably put it in there 40 years ago and thought, you know, we'll get it out again next year and then it just sat there for 40 years. So kind of sad, but um, strangely, that's the same exact lake we'll probably end up taking it to once we get it back up and running. Uh, Cause that's the closest, well, one of the closer lakes to our house. So um, it'll probably get back on the lake and yeah, back in the water after 40 years. So that might not be until next summer though. I'm gonna have to do some revarnishing. If I'm ambitious enough, maybe I'll get it done this year. I just have to get some uh, marine varnish so that uh, the wood seals. And not many people know this uh, that have a modern boat, but uh, with the old wood boats, you actually kind of have to let them soak a little bit before you go for a ride because the wood swells. And um, by letting it soak in the water a little bit, uh, everything just kind of swells up and seals off a little bit better. Um, we had to do that with our last boat too. The first like time we took our old boat on the water, we got it out there and it, um, started to leak a lot in the boat and it freaked my son Steven out. And I think we probably let him watch the movie Titanic a little too soon because he was a little bit nervous in the boat. Uh, but then after about a half hour or so, everything swells up and it stops leaking. So uh, I've seen guys even that, that boat back their uh, trailer into the water with the boat on it, just let it sit there for a bit and then pull it out. And then they'll drop it in the water and use it. So a little bit of work to do on this boat, but um, yeah, we should be there soon. It's about 30 minutes away from where we're at right now. Hey Jason, look, there's another boat. He's probably headed out to the lake where we're going to right now. That'll be us with our boat trailer pretty soon. Pretty soon. So I'm gonna try and find the little main street here. And see if we can't uh, come across this lake, which we've been talking about. So I'm just gonna turn a corner, maybe not that one. And I'll turn this corner. There's a farmer's market down here. I don't know if it's on today or not, but. Ooh, and every small town has an ice cream store. That's not open today either. And they've got like razor wire on top of the ice cream store there too. I guess people are really mad for their ice cream. Or if there's a zombie apocalypse, maybe the that's the first thing that they'd run for. So just down the way is the lake. These houses in front of us are lakefront properties, so we have to find a beach access to kind of see what this looks like here.
So this is the lake. This is probably, could even be the boat launch in the area where the little racing boat uh, used to set sail. Not that it had sails, but you know, it's fashion. Now we're gonna walk out on the dock and check it out. Looks like there's some fishing going on down here. And when you're out with your kids, you gotta stop and just have some fun once in a while too. It's not very deep right here. Just stay in the middle. Do you want dad to go first? What? What do you see? We're looking for fish. So Lake Wobbleman's actually pretty huge. Um, it stretches, geez, I don't know, I'll have to do the measurements to get you the exact mileage, but it's a big lake. We've never boated this far from uh, where Wobbleman is, but we have uh, driven this far, and it's, I'd say if you're driving by car, it's probably about 15, 20 minutes long, so it's a bit of a drive. So there's some of the houses right on the water. There's where we parked, kind of by the community hall there. And yeah, very nice. Melissa and I are thinking that when we retire someday, we wouldn't mind having a little house on the water like this. Nice in summer, probably not super nice in winter. It gets pretty cold out here, but um, you know, then you get your whole summer right at the lake. And it's just beautiful outside today. There's hardly a wind. It's hot, it's nice. It's just perfect. It's like the perfect day today. I wasn't kidding about the ice cream place with the <laughs> razor wire on top. You guys see that? Like, they really don't want people going in there for ice cream after hours, that's for sure. But enough sightseeing, it's time for us to go and grab our boat. Just the end of the street, and on the right, we're going to pick the boat up from the old owners and hopefully get it back home safe and sound. And you said your uncle is the one that built the boat? No, uh, the guy that built it, his name was Doug McIntyre. Doug McIntyre built it back in... I think 1920, 21. Oh, 20 or 21, so it's as old as that, okay. Yeah, and the motor, I think, was bought in 1955. Yeah, the motor and the windscreen look newer. Yeah. Probably because they didn't want, when they raced these runabouts, a lot of times they didn't have, they didn't have a windscreen. windscreen at all, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, well can... Have to also... So, first thing we gotta do is move these bags of cement out of the way. Is yeah. there any spot where you want these? You know what? Let's just put them down. Like right, right out there right somewhere? Right there, so we don't have to do We're gonna get it dumped. It feels like it turned into cement. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna get it dumped soon. That doesn't feel very powdery anymore. No, I don't think we can do it. I don't know how many pounds that is. 400 kilograms. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. I'm just gonna get it out of the way so we can back up. So, the goal is gonna be to get the. I imagine they probably used to tow it with the tarp on. Right? Yes. Yeah. So they'll put the tarp back over. We'll put the tarp the back over. It's yours. Sure. I, I love old buildings like this. I mean, this. you could, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't take that much to kind of reinforce it, and then you could no. really have some fun with it. You could make it into a bunkhouse or, sure. you know, whatever. I right? think it's great. Yeah, actually, it's kind of a miracle that this boat hasn't fallen down on top because you can see the beam has actually. I know, I was looking at that. I thought, over. okay, so they, he's got that piece of wood holding that beam up. Well, I'll be careful with it. We're going to have to move that before we can I guess uh, maybe I should take these right out for now. Yeah, I think so. Okay, I can put it out here somewhere. Yeah, just throw it underneath our man there. Oh, all this stuff's been sitting here just for years. Yeah, the beams in the ceiling are starting to let go. It's a good thing getting stuff out now. Yeah, well, I'm getting out of Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of work. You want a hand? Well, let's see how heavy it is. Maybe 
Maybe if you want to get on uh, one side of it, then we can just. I'm thinking we'll scooch it forward under the end yeah, to go that way. I've got a rope I can rope my door down. And the van was filling up fast. I'd forgotten just how much other stuff I bought last time I was here that I had to bring back home. Ooh, thankfully we brought the minivan. Surprisingly you can put a lot of stuff in here. So cupboard is in, boat is in, oars are in. Uh, I've got to get the life jackets, I think, and then cover the boat up. So there it is. First daylight in probably almost four decades. So we put the tarp back on just because it's going to be going back on the highway. You can see it's all custom fit just for this setup here. Give me a little spot for the steering wheel and the shifter. So we're going to make sure the straps are tight, make sure it's winched on nice and solid on the front here. You can see it's a bit of a gap so we have to take care of that and wait for the truck. So while we were out here, the neighbor was uh, on his front step and he said they're bulldozing this property uh, in a few days and if there's anything we see that we could use, we could pretty well take it with us. So we're going to have a look-see and see what there is. That's an old matchbox set that's in bad shape though, but there's stuff everywhere. There's stuff all over the place here, so I'm just going to have a quick look. I didn't find much outside, but we did go inside the house and there were quite a few old antiques and treasures and things, but some weren't in the greatest shape. So I was able to save a few things, but uh, the gentleman that owned the property said that he saved a lot of stuff, put it in storage, and he's gonna bring it by the shop in the next week or so. So we'll see what he brings in. Maybe there's some really cool stuff. So we are loaded up and headed back down the highway. Uh, as you can see, the back of the vehicle there, um, we have a boat, we have a old general store cabinet, um, and then as we were leaving, the uh, the fellow that lived across the way said, well, they're tearing down this house, his old cabin there, and if there's anything in there we wanted, we could just take it. So we got an old um, uh, fireplace uh, screen. We got um, a children's roll-top desk. I need to put it back together, but still, it's a real wooden children's roll-top desk. It's cool. So there's a few uh, treasures there. So everything's all loaded up in the back, and uh, now, yeah, headed back into town. So uh, we're going to be meeting Charlie, who's got the boat on the trailer, and uh, I've got to get there ahead of him because um, we have our cars parked in the driveway, so uh, i got to get there quick and move everything out of the way. So we should be home uh, probably about a half hour or so. So we got it off the trailer and into the garage. Charlie's just going to park. We're going to have him in for a coffee. And so speaking of the little rowboat, this is it. Flipped over now. You can kind of see it's actually fairly stylish. Kind of a cool looking thing. So I've got the oars for it. The inside is all wood. So I'm going to wash everything down and see what kind of shape it's in. But I have a feeling it's going to be in pretty good shape after it gets cleaned up. Old race car from previous video nestled in my garage by my wall of fame over there. Sometimes I get bored and I do these little paintings, so I did the painting of the race car driver and the racer, and now I've got the little car to match. But yeah, there it is, in the garage, safe and sound. Okay, so here's the unveil. There she is. 
And I learned today that this boat was built about 1921, so it's a lot older than I thought it was. But come have a look. So inside, all they had were these thin little cushions for sitting on. The front cabin would seat probably three kids across. And the back cabin's definitely more just for two. So you can tell it's old. Look how early these life jackets are. They're cloth. So pretty cool setup. They did some work to it in the 50s where they added an electric start. And um, I got everything for it. So I got the owner's manual for the motor. That's kind of a nice thing to have. I got the control instructions for the controls here. And I even got the instructions for the Mastercraft tra trailer. So 1958 is when it was put on this trailer. So it's been sitting for a long time. Mastercraft is part of Canadian Tire. So if you're from Canada, feel some pride about that. But um, yeah, it tells you how to use and how to load this, uh, this on the boat on the trailer. So really cool stuff. I'm pretty excited. So this is after the bath. There's the old registration number. Windshield cleaned up a fair bit. Seats, there's the old seat pads in the bottom. Lots of leg room in the front. Go down in there so you can see tons of leg room in the front. Not so much when you're sitting. I've gotten inside. I actually do fit inside of this, thankfully. Um, and here's the controls. So there's your levers, your reverse, and your speed. The steering wheel. There's the speedometer and the electric starter. And yeah, the old seat pads there. So as you can see, it's really not in bad shape. In fact, this paint's not bad. Uh, it looks like they were doing a little bit of touch-up at one point to the red. Um, it looks like they got it filled and sanded, they just never painted it, but it's red. It's easy to match, so looking a lot better. Much better than it was before. And the little rowboat cleaned up really nice as well. Turns out it's quite early as well, 1920s or 30s, and just fantastic build quality. If you like these videos, subscribe to us on YouTube. You can also check us out online at curiosityedmonton.ca. But thanks for tuning in for another adventure, and we'll see you all soon.